Hello everyone and welcome back to The Little Quilter. Today we are working on a quilt packing, which leads me to the fabric that I'm working with, which you guys might recognize this pattern if you've been watching the channel, and you might recognize the fabric as well, um, because this is the same exact pattern that I worked on for the Kite in a Square Block quilt. So the Kite in a Square Block quilt is literally using the Block Lock Kite in a Square Roller. Um, it ends up being a 5 inch finished quilt block by the end of it. And I started and finished that quilt top. As I was working on that quilt top, I had an idea of all of the times whenever we're doing all of this custom quilting that the back of the quilt is just always so beautiful and I decided that I wanted to elaborate on that. I wanted to show that off in a way and so what I decided to do was to make a second quilt top. This is my plan and the quilt top is going to be the quilt bottom and so It'll almost be like a reversible quilt, except one side of the quilt will have a lot of the colored patterned fabric on it, and the other side is going to be a lot more modern and minimalist. So I'm going to go back to making these with the leftover fabric that I have from that quilt, which is nice because I can utilize all of the fabric that I have for this quilt, um, or at least try and use most of it up, so I'm not wasting anything. And it's going to give me a chance to really try out something new and different. Now, once I get this onto the long arm, I am hopeful that I can keep everything straight and everything lined up so that we basically end up, the, the thought is to end up with almost a square or square, to end up with a cross, maybe an offset cross, I haven't decided on that, that will line up these kite blocks will line up with the front of the quilt and so you'll have that pattern going down the center with the colored and then in the white areas which there'll be large white areas in the other four corners where that cross is not at that's going to contain all of that free motion quilting that should outline basically the front of the quilt. So this is the thought that I have. How successful I'm going to be at this, I don't know, but I am back to doing something that I was doing several months ago, um, this last summer working on it, and now I am back to making the same block again. But it's nice to revisit something. Um, this is a really easy and simple block to make because it has the block lock kite roller. So as always, I hope that you guys enjoy this video and enjoy watching this hopeful quilt top back come together. Let's do it.
All right, so I don't have all of the blocks completed, I don't think, but I'm not sure how many more I need to actually cut um, because sometimes I just get real bad at quilt math and then I do quilt math and I forget how many blocks I already have. And so because I can, I'm just gonna lay it out. And what I'm gonna do is I have laid out behind me the quilt and I'm going to take these and lay them across. So I'm just gonna be doing like a off-centered cross, basically. So something a little bit more modern. Obviously it's not gonna go over the top of this, right? It's gonna be on the back, but this is just giving me an idea of where these will be laying in relation to the actual front of the quilt, all right? So let me see how this works. Okay, I know this is pretty difficult to see, um, but it definitely will be easier once I have white fabric down as well to see this outline. But basically, I've got everything, so I've got everything on this line here all the way to here. So I need one block for here. So that's one more block. And then, so I really only need, actually only need two more blocks. Okay, so we can do that. Okay, so I've done a little bit of fussy cutting to get these last blocks that I need. So one half block here, and I really just wanted this little star in the center. I thought that was really pretty. And then of course, just the back of what it looked like, which I think they normally would go like this, but. And then I got one to do an entire block with this. So let's go ahead and we'll sew our white pieces that I've already cut out on either side of this to make our kite block. Right, now we've got these cut or sewn, we'll cut them. You wanna iron all of these blocks outward, even though you are technically pressing to the light side. And that's because this is a block lock roller. And that's how block lock rollers work, is they basically, in order to make sure the block is perfect, catch on this seam and hold it in place so that whenever you cut it, you get this beautiful picture or this beautiful block that's nice, straight, the exact size and dimensions that you're wanting. Um, and so that's the glory of it. Now, the downside of it in this instance is that obviously I have to press all of my seams to this light side. You know, for some people that may bother them more than other people. Um, you know, if you were pressing your seams open, you would still have that white line there anyways. So it's not the end of the world to me and to get a beautifully pressed block that's the right size every single time, definitely well worth it. So now that we've got these done, we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side.
All right, so you can see it coming a little bit more to shape of what we're actually looking at. So now that I've got all of the white down on this side, um, I'm going to go ahead and sew up all of these together because they're not actually sewn together, and then sew this line here. Um, and so the goal being that once I put this on there, each block that is currently there will already be, um, it, it will be underneath it as well. And so whenever I do my quilting, this white space right here is just going to show basically the quilting design that's going to follow all the rest of these blocks, but then it will move and transition smoothly into the colored blocks and then move back out into the white blocks. Now, I'm also hoping that I have enough white fabric to do all of this, but that will be seen as we progress through this. I'm not, I'm not quite sure if I do, so I may have to go ahead and order some more white fabric because it's taking up quite a bit of fabric. I, I guess I just didn't think about it in the sense of the, you know, by width of fabric amount. So, um, and the main thing there too that's been a bit difficult is there are a lot of white fabrics out there, and so I just wanted to keep one that was the same, and so I keep purchasing it from the same place, um, and actually have purchased it online. So that's why I have to wait for it to get shipped here. So hopefully I don't have to do that. But let me see if I can continue on through this. Um, definitely making some progress, which is good. Alright, so we're at a bit of a critical part here in that I am putting, well let me show you. So I am putting on the middle row that's going to go across here and I'm trying to be really careful um, about the placement of it. And so you can see here that I'm trying to keep these lined up, all of these rows lined up with this row along the whole block, um, which is why I've got, some of you may be wondering, why does she have the quilt top laying out with this on top? Because it's so confusing and it's difficult to look at, and I understand that for sure, but it has just been a way for me to keep everything lined up, as well as to know exactly how many of these I've got. And of course, um, you know, trying to keep everything laid out nice and flat. So as we go around here, now my edges, I know, so if you look over here, I forgot when I was doing these rows to account for not only the border, but sort of that extra fabric that we usually have at the end. Now, I do believe this is still sticking over a couple of inches, so we may be fine. Um, we'll have to just wait and see at the end how significant that is. Uh, the next thing on either end of this, I added a border to to match that, and I think that part's going to be okay. I think we're going to be fine there. It's just going to be these edges here that might be a little bit odd, because um, you want to have that gap or overlap or whatever you want to call it on the back of your fabric, because you want it to... Um, you want to have some room whenever you're quilting to have it sit over that, right? Um, now, I don't want to have a lot of movement in this, so, you know, I'm hoping that sometimes that can help take up if there's a little bit of movement as you're rolling the quilt up, but we don't want that to do it this time. I don't want it to move. The other thing is that you have to recognize that all of this is actually going to be flipped. So this will be actually on the other side. So once we pick this up and put it on the quilt, this is actually going to be laying like this, um, which is a bit hard to understand at the moment, so. But I just thought it might be a little important for you to understand why I'm going to such lengths on this, because I want everything to line up so that whenever I do my sewing, everything lines up as well, and I'm trying to take care to do that properly. I think this is going to be about the last thing I can do until I get the rest of my fabric. I have this one last large piece here, 
but I'm going to wait until I get the next bolt just in case there's any sort of like it would fit better on the other end than on on this end. Um, I just want to make sure that I utilize my fabric properly. So I'll probably finish this part and sew this strip and then this will actually get put to the side unfortunately and we won't be able to progress with getting it on the loom. Now I've ordered the fabric so it should take you know a few days to get here and then we'll be back onto it so it's not like it's being shelved for the year or anything. So um, I will leave you guys with this. As always, I hope that you have enjoyed this video. I know it's more of a preparation video and once again my quilt math has let us down in that I did not get enough fabric, but that's okay because it's coming and we've still got some progress to make here and don't worry there's loads of other quilts to be done for sure. So I look forward to seeing you guys next time. As always, have a wonderful day and we'll see you next time.